This video shows the 7th annual March for Choice passing through Dublin. The march is organised every year by the Abortion Rights Campaign. This year it happened in the context of winning the referendum to overturn the ban on abortion that was in the Irish Constitution, but it's happening right before legislation is introduced that will implement that and allow for abortion access in Ireland. There are major issues with this proposed legislation because the intention is to restrict access despite the fact that two thirds of the people voted for abortion access in that referendum. In particular, the government intends to insist on a three day waiting period between when a woman first visits the doctor and between when she gets abortion pills prescribed. That waiting period is going to affect some women to the extent that abortion won't be accessible to them particularly those who are in abusive relationships. A second major issue is the demand that doctors should be allowed to refuse to refer women to other doctors for an abortion if they are not willing to do so themselves. In fact, something like this situation already exists. There are consultants who refuse to prescribe contraception and indeed the anti-referendum uh, campaign included some of those consultants as spokespeople. But what they do is they simply refer the person to the doctor down the corridor and they do their job. Many people who voted yes in the referendum are unaware of these issues. Indeed, the turnout for the march this year was probably about a quarter of last year's march. But last year's happened in the context where pressure was really building for a referendum and a lot of people sensed that and saw the reason to turn out. As it was, the five or so thousand people who did march showed there's a very strong core to the pro-choice movement, one that will be demanding legislation and will be combating shortcomings in that. In all accounts, it's important to acknowledge just how far we've come since the dark days of 1983 when the Eighth Amendment was passed. In the years after that, the anti-choice people tried to ban travel, they tried to ban books from libraries and magazines that carried abortion information, and they prosecuted the students' unions that continued to provide information, and that basically just meant phone numbers for clinics in Britain in their annual student union guide. They were relentless in their hounding of pro-choice activists. Indeed, the student union leaders who continued to publish the information were taken to court and had, uh, at the time, a massive judgment of costs awarded against them in the region of 90,000, which would have bought two houses in Dublin in that time period. In the 19, early 1990s, in the aftermath of the X case, uh, when the state attempted to prevent a 14-year-old uh, girl who was pregnant as a result of rape from travelling, and there was huge mobilisations which overturned that and forced the courts to allow her to go, uh, pro-choice activists were physically attacked by anti-choice campaigners several times on the streets until they gave up that tactic because it was resulting in their own marginalisation. The recent referendum saw all sorts of disgusting lies and smears used by the same forces. Some of them just on Twitter and hard to track down exactly who was responsible for them, and that was some of the nastiest. But also they're able to use their huge access to the Irish media, their opinion pieces in all the major Irish papers to continually represent a point of view that today almost nobody continues to hold. And in the last weeks, we've witnessed them uh, are the major spokespeople starting to make what are pretty obvious racist dog whistles and indeed appearing to make a turn towards what would be called alt-right politics in other countries like the US and Britain. That's probably because they've looked at the exit poll results that show between 8 and 9 out of 10 young people voted yes in the referendum and they're aware that their only constituency among the youth are kind of the angry young white men who've turned to racism elsewhere. It's quite shocking on the one level to see them go to, the, go to this position, but then it's also not very surprising. Opposite, the anti-choice movement here was always a movement very much connected to the hard right, with some prominent people even going as far as to speak at fascist rallies elsewhere in Europe. The majority of the leadership with a hard right politics were sensible enough to recognise that the outward uh, trappings of fascism, the Sig Heiling and all that sort of stuff wasn't going to help them, but they're very much aligned to a more 
uh, but still obvious Catholic hard right across Europe and indeed reaching into the United States, something that looks much more towards Franco Spain and the sort of repressive politics there than Hitler's Germany, but is part of fascism all the same. What has been noticeable and cheering in the post-referendum period is the number of activists who've now got involved in the housing struggles. And indeed, reference to the recent violent eviction was made by one of the speakers from the North on the stage when she threw a balaclava into the crowd at one point. We'll have, more, we'll have video of the different speeches going up over the next few days and you'll be able to catch up on them here. The important thing is even though legislation is coming in, the struggle is far from over. The exact terms that it will be implemented and trying to improve it will become important, as will monitoring the attempt by anti-choice forces to shut down and limit access. We highly recommend getting involved with the abortion rights campaign. They have very much led the struggle since 2012 and are very much the group that more than anything else was behind uh, the successful winning of the referendum. As for us, we've been involved in pro-choice struggles since we founded in 1984 in the aftermath of the referendum, and we'll be continuing that sort of activity into the future. As anarchists, we're involved in the struggle for a horizontal society free of hierarchies, free of both bosses and politicians, not one where every work you go in and face a dictator with very little say or control over your own working life, what you do or indeed what is produced. Late stage capitalism has become a massive threat to the future existence of humanity, particularly in the uncontrolled climate change that they seem incapable and now entirely unwilling to actually try and impact. At the same time, we are seeing things like the housing crisis, a situation which is making landlords and property speculators richer than ever, but which is creating misery for perhaps up to 80% of the population. The context we're in now is one where if you don't already have a home, it's almost impossible for 80% of people to either buy one or to pay rent at a reasonable rate, reasonable being perhaps 20%. Many people working in Dublin at the moment and the other major cities are paying up to 50% or more of their income out on rent. The successful campaign to demand a referendum was, was one that demonstrated that electoral politics isn't the way forward. After all, when uh, Labour was kicked out in the last election, multiple commentators said that was it. There was now no hope for a referendum. Commentators from the left and the right joined in that particular chorus, but they turned out to be wrong. The reality is that mass movements on the streets and taking action like strike for repeal that threatened disruption were able to force the most conservative of Irish governments, because Fine Gael mostly represent that, to go ahead and call a referendum after the pressure brought about by the uh, Citizens' Assembly and its recommendations. This can be a more general model for change, a model that says that rather than look to political parties to introduce change for us, and to be honest, they never will, we can organise ourselves and bring pressure through protest action, through direct action, and force politicians to change things. But our ultimate goal is to go well beyond that. Our ultimate goal is the abolition of capitalism and the introduction of that society that doesn't have bosses and doesn't have politicians, where we all are in control of our own lives. If you want to find out more, check out www.wsm.ie. Or for a detailed explanation of anarchism, Google Anarchist FAQ, and you'll find pretty much all your questions answered.